What I wanted to talk about today um, is staying the course is not easy. But what I firstly wanted to talk about is um, what we've been doing over the last couple of years. So, I mean, many of you have come from uh, different sort of avenues. Some of you have come through from Investmart. We started in 1999. Um, some of you may have come from Intelligent Investor. Some of you may have come from Eureka. Our overriding uh, purpose, I mean, the reason why 52 of us now come to work, I mean, two years ago there was only about five of us, why 52 people come to work every day in Melbourne and Sydney is solely to help all Australians reach their financial goals. And we want to do that through technology. So we're not going after based simply high net worths, we're going after all Australians. We believe that there is a real problem with financial literacy in Australia. We believe that problem is, is pretty much around asset allocation. We believe a lot of people go to barbecues and they get their barbecue tips and that's why they buy shares. And some of that stuff, uh, Gaurav and Alex are going to talk about why do you add a share to your portfolio. It's not because your next door neighbour seems like he's making a lot of money and uh, he seems to know what he's doing. So how do we actually do that? We do that by three things. And a lot of people over the last couple of years, whether you came from Intelligent Investor or Eureka, seem to sort of like, you know, worry about what we were actually trying to do. And what we're trying to do is bring together three separate parts of the puzzle which we believe give sort of automated investment advice. One of those is research and advice. And research and advice is over Eureka and Intelligent Investor. Intelligent Investor we, we bought in 2015. I mean, these guys are amazing. It's a team of 10 analysts. Um, different to pretty much any other investment newsletter in the country and probably in the world. These guys get independently audited every year. So they've been independently audited by Grant Thornton since 2001, and this year we got independently audited by Ernst & Young. Um, those reports are available on the website. And those guys show that over 15 years, now 16 years, we've outperformed the All Ordinaries by 5% year on year every year, um, on average. I think that is, is real testament to these analysts and also to the value investing framework that they use. Uh, remember, this is through the GFC, through Brexit, through you know, the Greek debt crisis, I mean, through everything. These guys have seemed to be able to maintain these returns. Uh, Intelligent Investor also run three of our model portfolios, our Australian um, income uh, equity portfolio and the Intelligent Investor uh, growth portfolio and Alex is going to talk about the um, new small company fund. We bought Eureka Report because when you're trying to automate the investment planning process, you also need somebody to talk about um, the wider sort of wealth stuff, how to run an SMSF, why auto rebalancing or why rebalancing your portfolio and asset allocation are important. And so we, we bought Eureka Report last um, year. We bought that back from News Corp. I bought Investmart, I sold Investmart in 2007 to Fairfax, and we bought that back in 2013. Um, and then we bought uh, a Eureka Report off News, as I said. If you ever want to sell a business to someone, sell it to a media company, a really large one, because most likely you can buy it back in a few years' time for a lot less. Um, so that's what, what we're about, and that's, that's why we exist, and, that's, and, and you know, I apologise over the last couple of years, we've, we've taken some time to put all these businesses together, and we've had technology problems and whatever else, but I think we're pretty much there now. Um, can I ask who in the audience actually uses the Investmart website? And who uses Just Intelligent Investor? And Eureka Report? Yeah. Um, so what I want to show you um, in a few slides is sort of like what we've been doing with the Investmart website for those of you that haven't uh, uh, visited recently. So our ethos, our ethos is really simple. Apart from offering all these tools and services, our ethos is diversification. It's number one. So for us, we believe that is a framework that we can use across asset classes and also the intelligent investor guys use within asset classes. We believe in lower fees and we believe we can bring the fees down even lower on our, on our sort of model portfolios. So for those of you who invested in the portfolios last year, they were about 97 basis points. We brought that down to 77 basis points. And I think as we get more scale, we'll be able to bring those prices down even further and pass them on to, to our members. We believe in transparency. Everything we do, we show you. There is nobody else in the country, you find me a fund manager that shows you exactly what's in your portfolio and exactly why you buy and sell a share. So we use SMAs and we use those SMAs and we show you every single stock in the SMA, I mean in the, in the portfolio. You can click on that 
company, and you can see the uh, thesis behind why we're buying, selling, or holding those, those stocks. Um, so basically, think of an SMA or our investment portfolio. It's like a managed fund, but basically our products are based on, an, on uh, uh, a discretionary management of a portfolio of stocks on your behalf, and that's how we do it. So what I wanted to do is, this is sort of like our smart sort of idea where we use our portfolio manager. So InvestSmart has always been the sort of tools. Uh, the portfolio manager is at the heart of our tools. We're about to bring in international shares into the portfolio manager. So those of you who have been sending us emails for the last two years asking for international shares, um, I believe that's in testing now. So we're covering seven markets. You can pretty much put in anything to the portfolio manager, all shares, all managed funds. It tracks everything for you. You can research on all those. I'm going to show you a live demo of the website in a minute, which is really upsetting for our IT people because they always believe live demos go really badly. Um, we believe in asset allocation, so we provide the tools to show you what, what your overall asset allocation is in every asset class. So we look through every security in your portfolio. So just because it looks and smells like an Australian equities, it might be an A REIT, we know that's property. You might have Magellan, um, we know that's international equities. You might have a managed fund, we look through that managed fund and we know what portions of what is in which asset classes. We'll talk about rebalancing. We believe rebalancing is really important though. You don't have to rebalance every day or every month. I'll show you over 20 years, you could rebalance over only four times and improve your average returns by about 1%. And tracking and monitoring on an ongoing basis is really important. So let's flip to the website. And I told all the IT guys not to deploy anything. Um, so what I wanted to show you, so InvestSmart website. So what we've done recently is we've added all these tools for you. Um, so on the left-hand side, we call it Member Essentials. It's pretty much the free tools. On the right-hand side, everything you now get on Intelligent Investor is in InvestSmart website. And the, and the menu, we've kept a very similar sort of menu structure that you're used to in Intelligent Investor. And same for Eureka Report. They're paid services, and, and as Tony said, there's something in your, in your uh, um, bag of goods that uh, shows you that um, or gives you a, a, an offer. On the left-hand side, we've We've produced a lot of tools where you can go into share, find any shares, you can see all the financials on those shares, you can see if we're researching those shares, that share. You can see whether there's buying or selling in director interest, which we believe is a key indicator of uh, what management thinks of their own company. You can have a look up managed funds. You can have a look up exchange traded funds. So we know that we've just put out an exchange traded fund uh, report for those of you who haven't seen it. It's looking at the whole industry. Exchange traded funds are going, you know, are, are booming at the moment. And, every, and not every exchange traded fund is like each other. So we, we did a report and we've done our own sort of star rating on, on what we believe is a good exchange traded fund compared to another. But you could go down sort of like for example and go, I want to find anything in Australia or you know, emerging markets and you can go and find you know, all the ETFs that are in emerging markets, for example, and then our star rating, and our star rating is based on liquidity, and then you can go into these sort of companies and find out exactly what they're investing in, what their underlying, or their top 10 underlying stocks are. Um, it's a really deep website. I mean, it's, it's quite amazing of what we've been able to bring together now, and all those tools are available for all members. Um, and we also, Eureka writes a lot of research, and Intelligent Investor writes a lot of research on that stuff. If I go to my portfolio, so again, remember the three sort of core parts of our business is research and advice, which is a main menu item, our, uh, our own products, our investment products, how we help you diversify, and the portfolio manager, which is really the advice part on asset allocation. You can now track all your performance, you can track that against benchmarks, you can track that against your goals. Um, on the left-hand side, we believe that's a fairly good process. So goals, setting goals, providing a health check, looking at your performance against those goals and against the benchmark, um, current holdings um, and, and research form the basis of automated investment advice. So we think sort of like the robo-advisors, as they call them, we don't call ourselves robo-advisors. You know, we think that's phase one. I think, you know, asking five, I use the word, starting with S, crappy questions, and then giving you a portfolio of ETFs is not really advice. I mean, that tells you nothing. Um, what we really want to do is 
automate the investment planning process a financial planner does. So we don't want to be a financial planner. You know, lots of you will go to financial planners. We believe in financial planning advice. Um, Paul Clitheroe is our chairman, but we believe there are a lot of people who don't have access to financial planners because of the cost, um, or, or do don't want to use a financial planner. Um, and so we've provided these services online to, to deal with many. And I think we've got, you know, we've got like 620,000 registered members. There's about uh, 60 odd thousand people using the portfolio manager, managing about $22 billion of assets. So what does a health check look like? So once you put all your stuff into the portfolio manager, what we do is we provide, and you've set your goals. So I've sort of like, it's come out with my goals that I'm a growth sort of member. And it shows me that I'm overweight Australian equities, which is what um, Tony was talking about. I'm underweight international equities. I'm overweight, I'm underweight property, underweight this, this other stuff. And I've got a health check score of about 70%. Now the whole idea of the health check is not to get to 100%. Yes, I mean, as soon as you get to 100% though, the next day you will be 99%. Because all of the time your prices, your equities, your securities are changing in price, they're going up and down, it's dynamic. The funds you're invested in, the fund manager of those funds may be changing their allocation. We may be tweaking our target a little bit, um, and I'll show you that in a minute. So what we're doing here is when you set your goals, we're setting you as a growth member or a balanced sort of member or a conservative. We've got our target asset allocation for that sort of risk profile, and we're comparing that against um, your portfolio and showing where you're under or overexposed. And as long as you're happy with that, then that's fine. But what we're saying is you can't, you can't be, and I'll show you in a minute what conservative people look like, you can't have a health check score of 29 or 30 per cent um, for a conservative person. You either are conservative and you've got a conservative portfolio, or you're high growth and you've got a high growth portfolio. You can't be conservative and have a high growth portfolio. Um, and so really this is just giving you an example of where you're under or overexposed and making sure you're happy with that under or overexposed. So what I always talk about is in, if in 2001, for example, you went along to a financial planner. The financial planner said you're a balanced type person. They gave you a set of, of investments that gave you that balanced growth profile, I mean that balanced profile. If over the next seven years you didn't do one thing, by 2007, 2008, you would have had a high growth portfolio, the GFC hit, you would have lost half your money. That's what not rebalancing does, and that's what happens if you get too overexposed to an asset class and don't do anything about it. And that's all that this health check is meant to do. It's just meant to alert you to the idea that you may be overexposed to a given asset class. So what we did then is we had a look at all of the aggregate information of all of our members that use Portfolio Manager. Now we take security and privacy very, very um, uh, strongly in, in investment. So we don't look at your personal information, we aggregate this information. And on the left hand side is our members conservative portfolio. There's about 10,000 people that say that they're conservative. And they are not conservative compared to what we believe is their target on the right hand side. Uh, ASX did a survey earlier in the year. They call this the axe because there's two blades and pretty much all Australians have this sort of axe. They have overweight property, overweight Aussie equities. And it gets more prominent when we have a look at the growth profile. Interesting enough, what have the um, conservative people been doing over the last six months? They're moving out of Aussie equities and into property and into international equities, which is good. At least they're getting into international equities. They're also going more overweight in property. Um, on the right hand side, what have we been doing in that target asset allocation? We've been moving out of cash and we've been moving into fixed interest and predominantly floating rate notes and also into um, global infrastructure. And the reason why we're doing that is we believe there's more downside, I mean sorry, there's more risk of interest rates going up than going down and so we're taking a bit of a sort of like a, a hedge against that. Here's the growth members. So we have about 40,000 members that say they're growth, and now you can really see that axe, two blades, um, property and Australian equities. Um, and you can see us on the right-hand side where we're much more diversified and much more into international equities. And, and it sort of goes back to uh, Tony's comment of the SMSFs, where most people in SMSFs haven't got any exposure to international equities. So why, um, this is the ASX survey, by the way. So, 
this is this is also an interesting part and in sort of like our job of trying to educate the world or at least just Australians on diversification and, and the need for it. So 46% of investors claim to be diversified. They have 2.7 securities. 40% um, of people said they weren't diversified and they only had 1.6 securities. So this sort of diversification problem, and I'm sure if I ask the crowd, you know, how many stocks you have, a lot of people will probably say five or six, and I'm guessing that most of those will be banks, maybe BHP and Woolworths, and you're sort of like happy days. Um, and that's probably done well for you in the past with dividends, whether that keeps on going with companies now cutting dividends, um, and whether that is the best place for your money, given the international stock market has, has gone on a tear recently. Um, that's again up to you to decide. I mean, we don't, we don't tell you what to do, we just give you the information to make decisions. So why is asset allocation really important? These guys won a Nobel Prize in 1990. Um, it's called Modern Portfolio Theory. And basically what they came out with was they put a mathematical framework around what our forebears have been telling us for 100 years, don't put all your eggs in one basket. So they basically said, you can add a security to your portfolio that's not correlated, that's not similar, so add cash to equity, and you can decrease your risk without really sacrificing returns. And that's, that's pretty much every fund manager around the, around the world now follows this sort of modern portfolio theory. Even our intelligent investor guys follow it to some degree with respect to how, and, and Gaurav's gonna talk about this, of why he would add a new stock to his portfolio or take one away. So one year relative performance, how does it work? So um, if we have a look at the, on the left hand side is all of our diversified portfolios. Um, so we've benchmarked them against different things. So you can see conservative, moderate, balanced growth and high growth. And on the right hand side is sector specific cash, fixed interest, property, international and Aussie equities. So in the last year, uh, international equities have been the best performing asset class. If we have a look, when I did this in April, it was Australian equity. So what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that each asset class doesn't behave exactly the same as each other asset class. And so having a mix of all five of them gives you a better chance, a better return, less volatility. If we have a look at two years, two years was Australian equities. Two years, when I did it back in May, was Australian prop, was, sorry, property. If I have a look at 10 years, and as I go out longer and longer, but I didn't want to bore you with lots of slides, you can see now that the left-hand side, the diversified portfolios, have come up to similar returns to the right-hand asset classes. And that's the whole idea of asset allocation. Now, I had a really smart guy in Canberra ask me, um, yeah, but if I just stayed in Australian equities and did nothing, would I have been better off? Yes, actually. You would have been, so domestic equities was 10.34%. The yellow bars are volatility, but you would have been going up and down, up and down, and the GFC you would have been really worried. And on the left-hand side, for 1% less for the high growth at 8.8%, you would have had much less volatility at 12%. And that's what we're talking about. And it's called sequencing risk in financial planning terms. If any of you have seen a financial planner, they'll talk about sequencing risk, which is when you're coming up to the end of that investment goal, whether it's retirement or whatever else, and that GFC event happens at that stage, then that's catastrophic. And then you have to actually work longer or whatever you need to do, but you can't, you can't actually realise your financial goal at that time because you've just lost half your money or a third of your money. And it's called sequencing risk. So what diversification does is it balances out your volatility over time. So rebalancing, just very quickly, we, we're, I'm running out of time. Um, rebalancing really quickly. So, what I did is I had a look over the last 20 years and I rebalanced four times. So the blue lines are four times. And you can see in 2001 I rebalanced. And when we rebalanced, what I did is on the right hand, the far right hand column is our health check. Whenever I got below about 75%, I rebalanced. So I just didn't make this up just to make it look good. It was pretty much 75%. Um, I rebalanced in 2001. In 2006, I was taking money out of um, Aussie equity, hypothetically this is. I was taking money out of Aussie equities and international equities and putting it into cash and fixed interest because I got overweight in those classes. I, it then kept on going. Remember the market kept on going again into 2007. I had to take more away. And then in 2012, it went back the other way um, and I rebalanced back the other way. By doing that four times in 20 years, 
I increased my CGAR from 7.64 to 8.39 per cent. The reason why you don't want to rebalance all the time and you need to sort of weigh up the pros and cons is transactional costs. It's going to cost you money to rebalance all the time. So you don't need to do it all the time. You need to do it when you become uncomfortable with your overexposed um, asset class, whichever asset class that may be. So how do we help? So just coming into the investment products really quickly before I give over to Gaurav and Alex. Um, so on the left-hand side, we have a couple of diversified portfolios. They're really for newbies. They're really for people that, that don't have an existing portfolio and just want to get started. Um, those diversified portfolios are all ETFs. So we use ETFs. So our core competency, we believe we're very strong in Australian equity. So as Warren Buffett says, if, if you're outside of your, your circle of competency, use broad-based index, indices. That's what we do. So for Australian equities, we believe we've got, a, we've got a, um, an advantage on most people because of our knowledge and our core competency. Um, and our track record sort of attests to that. Um, but for international markets and fixed interest and property, we use ETFs. But we actively manage the asset allocation but we use ETFs to give us the exposure to, to whichever asset class and the, and the weightings we're looking for. Um, along the top, we've got asset class specific portfolios. So we've got interest rate, uh, uh, fixed interest, international equities, property and hybrid income. So for example, international equities, we're overweight Europe at the moment, underweight America, I mean, sorry, underweight emerging markets. And we balance that against what we believe internally we're, we're doing. Um, and then we've got the three along the bottom, which is the equity income, equity growth, and small companies. What are we about? We're about providing low-cost products that are transparent, that help you plug your gaps. So if you find you're over underexposed by an asset class like international equities, um, then we provide products that allow you to simply and easily fill that gap. So how's our growth portfolio? I'll just show you the growth portfolio. Just quickly back to that transparency thing. We always track ourselves against our benchmark. Um, which we use the multi-sector growth um, benchmark. We are really good at data. We bring in data from everywhere, as you can see if you go to InvestMart and use some of those filtering tools. We bring in data from everywhere, so we go and have a look at every other fund manager in Australia that's also benchmarked against the multi-sector growth. Or for the international one, we do it against the um, MISCI World X Australia. And then we have a look at all those peers. We've got 847 peers against us. Um, we're in blue, they're in grey, um, the benchmark's in gold. We believe over the very long term, we will underperform our benchmark by the fees. That's why we've got to get them down lower. And we'll outperform our peers by the differential in our fees. So at the moment, you can see, and this has only been going for three years, but it seems to be working. Um, the average peer fees are 1.8% and we're 77 And we're pretty much beating them by about 1%. We're not swinging for the fences. We're not, we're not a new fund manager that's going out and trying to get massive returns and risk your money. We're trying to just beat our peers and match our index. And we believe over the long term that that's a much better way for people to reach their financial goals than barbecue tips and whatever else. Uh, staying the course. So as we said, um, set achievable goals. That's important. Manage and research. Assess and diversify. Um, hopefully you can use the health check to do that, it's a free tool. Um, rebalance from time to time, um, weighing up the, the pros and cons of costs and track to stay on course. Thank you very much.